Hello everybody, I'm Gwen Campbell Mendes. Welcome to Gwen's Bookish Ramblings. So, I was supposed to be doing one of the books my mother loved, but I decided that I was going to be supremely lazy and instead do this particular children's picture book because, um, I didn't feel like going to the effort. So, Gray Oakley's Magical Changes is an interesting little creation. I mean, as you can probably tell by the cover, what's most interesting about it is this is a book that draws very, very deeply out of uh, the surrealist uh, traditions. Um, there is a certain Magritte-like quality to this, although Magritte did tend to be a lot more plastic and, and less impressionist in his uh, imagery. Um, so to speak, uh, and a certain amount, I suspect, of Salvador Dali. Um, the idea behind this book, uh, and I will show you next the back cover, you can see these pictures um, on both the front and back cover are these odd conglomerations that you have. The bottom half appears to be somebody's bedroom, and the top half is a train uh crossing overhead on a bridge. What you have in this book is you have these pictures where this is, where you have a complete picture. Um, in this case, a park in, you know, some large city somewhere. And, uh, and probably, probably somewhere, uh, English-ish. Uh, based on directions of traffic. Um, also because this book was, in fact, initially published in England. Um, but it's just a park. But as you can see with that very, very sharp dark line in the middle, this particular picture is, in fact, split so that there are, you have the same number of pages, but the top half of the page and the bottom half of the page are separated from each other so that you can recombine them. As you can see in this case, the top half is a scene out of, uh, out of the uh, tale of the Trojan Wars, because there is the Trojan horse, but on the bottom, you still have that same picture of a park. Um, these I have, by the way, because this book is slightly bigger than my scanner, I've had to do a certain amount of, of fixing things to sort of get whole pictures, so if there's anything that winds up looking wonky, I mean, part of it is that these uh, don't entirely align, but part of it is also because I've had to stitch this together. Um, but as you can see, you have these four trees from the park lead straight into this Trojan horse. And so you can mix and match and have these odd surreal pictures, the same four trees from the park before, but they are in place of the swan's heads that would otherwise be there. And so it's, it's fascinating, and these are lovely illustrations. They're very, very nice pictures that have been painted, but they form these strange and frequently disturbing pictures. Did you see this picture of a giant head with somebody uh, of this bearded man with, uh, you know, moles or whatever those are, who is licking lollipops, but those lollipops are poking out of some sort of memorial thing in a graveyard. It's, it's odd and it's disturbing and it's, like I said, there's, there's aspects of this that do really call on uh, call on the surrealists. Uh, they they bring up, you know, in certain aspects of style, it feels slightly like Magritte, not 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 very. Um, but some of these images seem to fall more within Magritte's wheelhouse. Not this one, but some of them. Uh, and like I said, there's an element of Salvador Dali in this too, and probably some other surrealists that would be more appropriate that I cannot bring to mind because surrealism is not something I spent a huge amount of time on. Um, but it's, it's such a fascinating little book to just to flip through and to look at and to consider 
to consider these pictures, to consider the recombinations. And then you all, but you also have just the fact that this is, this is the image that is on the same page, the same top and bottom page. And it's supposed to look like that, but this is, this is the last picture that I'm going to show as just an example of how lovely and evocative some of these are. Because they're really, really lovely pictures. They're, you know, you look at this and this is sort of taking this notion of, of the Arctic and how the Arctic looks and feels and it's just gorgeous. This is just a, a gorgeous little painting that somebody's done. But as I said, you go back through these and... And it's beautiful, and it's detailed, and yet it's so sharply disturbing. It's, you have these swans, and instead of a swan head, you have these four trees. But there are a lot of other things, like this Trojan horse, that you could swap it in and have that Trojan horse on top of those swan heads. Um... And yes, there is a page with the bottom half of the Trojan horse with all of those men pushing it, and you could have them pushing trees or pushing swan heads. You know, this image of the bed and uh, with the train overhead, that, that image can also be swapped in. There are two sets, by the way, and let's go to the cover again. There are sort of two sets of images because, of course, the front pages, the even pages cannot be matched with the odd pages. It, it doesn't work. So you have these four or five smaller, uh, you know, brownish sticks, which uh, if you have the proper connector for these four men, uh, it's obviously four men carrying umbrellas. But there's a variety of, of things that they can have. In this case, of course, they're showing the laundry lines as the top half. This, is, this particular image of those four men is one of the ones that, that really pushes the Magritte angle for me. Um, I think it's because of the stolidity and, and the way that you have those four men are, are so solidly present. Magritte, of course, is not... Uh, does not tend to have people in his paintings. He tends to be very much a strictly an object, much more an objects thing. Um, but I, I've just, I grew up with this book in the house, and it's, it's such an interesting thing, and I, I just love. I, I've always liked this book. It's something to flip through of an afternoon, but I can keep coming back to it, and I still, periodically, if it's if it's out and I happen to just put my hands on it, I'll flip through it again and again and again, because I like these pictures. By the way, the uh, the man in the front is not in fact wearing a veil. That is, in fact, a price sticker that was on the cover that was imperfectly removed, and thus uh, he now looks like he has a veil, but that's actually leftover sticker, sticky stuff. Um, anyhow, so... There's not... There's limited things to say about this book, in spite of the fact that I've managed to ramble, you know, somewhat aimlessly for nearly ten minutes now. But... I, I just, I can't say, I, I can't emphasize enough just how, how conceptually interesting these pictures are when you play with them about the way that they sort of play with reality just that little bit. Um, this one, the man in the bed I've always thought was particularly intriguing just because he looks terrified. And the picture that's supposed to connect to him is just of, you know, the 
uh, top of a bed, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the canopy over the bed and, and so on. Um, but the fact that he's terrified works with everything. It works with the it works with this uh, train. It works with the one that uh, has giant mushrooms. It works with the spinning plates and salt shaker and stuff. Because there's a pig incredibly disturbing picture of a clown because it's a clown, so it's automatically disturbing. And the clown is like got things on his face and hands that he's balancing like dishes and stuff on. Um, and. Uh, that one's, like I said, it's just fundamentally disturbing because clown, uh, because clowns are fundamentally disturbing. Um, anyhow, I, I just, I enjoy these. I enjoy the fact that they, they're these lovely little detailed, but just, just that little bit enough of, of sketchiness and impressionism to it to... Uh, to keep it from being that little bit too plastic and, and solid, just just light enough to be evocative, but just solid enough to to really give you that that sense of dream logic that that you get in surrealist work. So um, I've been entirely aimless for wow, 11 and a half minutes. Um, but I don't think I really have, um, I don't think I have much else to say, uh, other than that I, I recommend this book just as something interesting and different and intriguing and real pretty. It's really pretty. Uh, so that's everything, and we will return to our regularly scheduled doldrums when I see you all next week.